Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast, Episode 11. So you're someone who loves to focus on what is important in each moment. In fact, there may be few things more cherished than being in the flow state when you're getting your best work done. As it's happening, time flies by and sometimes you even feel euphoric, proud of what you're accomplishing. But too much of a good thing is never good. And if you have ever missed a midday meal because you're engrossed in your work, you may know that sometimes you need a reminder or an interrupt at just the right moment. They're helpful. They keep you on track and they prevent you from making mistakes. But how do you program these interruptions or reminders into your life? In this solo episode, I'll be sharing my thinking about this particular problem and what needs to be invented for us to get some permanent relief. Welcome to the Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Nasby, the fastest way to done. Nasby is an all-in-one tool for effective task and project management for individual users and teams. It organizes your work with simplicity so that you can focus on getting stuff done. Nasby is free for up to five active projects and five people in a team, so there's no excuse to wait. And the premium plan with unlimited projects starts with only $19 a month. Set it up in three easy steps and watch your projects move forward. So thanks to Nasby for sponsoring this episode of the Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not just reading a a promo spot. I've used Nasby. I actually used them for about a month. I'm still using them, but started about a month and a half ago to interact with the folks from the company as they were sponsoring the Task Management and Time Blocking Summit. And it's the best software I've ever used to communicate task and project information back and forth, mostly focused around the tasks that you need to do. Strongly recommend it. That's Nasby. Find out more, go to www.nasby.com. Welcome back. So let's start with a story. Ivan has a terrible problem. He's a creative graphics designer who must tap into a deep place to come up with his best ideas. Sometimes that may mean working for 12 hours straight, without eating, without going to the restroom, and even without stretching his back by taking a simple walk or a stroll around the office. But it's not just a momentary problem. On a big project, He'll forget to pay bills for weeks at a time. He'll stop spending enough time with his kids to support his family emotionally. And he'll quit his exercise program. While the results of his work are gratifying and his professional achievements are many, he wishes he could be more balanced when he's doing his best work. Too many balls are being dropped, including a not-so-funny incident when he accidentally left his 8-year-old kid at the park until it was dark while he was working on a deadline. Frankly, he's scared that if he messes with a good thing, the quality of his output will suffer. So he's reluctant to think of too much. But there should be a way, he thinks, to be an accomplished professional who executes his practical responsibilities with some degree of basic skill. So if this story resonates, Have you ever found yourself in a similar dilemma, like an Ivan, either on the micro level where you're working on a particular task, you enter the flow state, you have given it your total concentration, time is flying, you're doing your best work, you're really thrilled to be using your best capabilities, your best skills on something that's really challenging, so there's a good balance between challenge and the difficulty of the difficulty of the task and the skills that you have 
uh, only to realize at six o'clock that you mixed breakfast and lunch or that there was an important meeting that the reminder came up but you dismissed it and you were back to work somehow you really enjoyed it so much and you accomplished so much but at the same time something else went to heck on the micro level and on the macro level month two months you are deeply involved in some long-term project and when the project was finished all of a sudden you had five extra pounds and you don't know where they came from or your kid graduated and you don't even know what happened in the meantime did, did you go to the graduation <laughs> you can't remember <laughs> extreme case but both of these situations if you if they resonate with you any at all both of them come from the same place they they come from a failure to interrupt yourself effectively we usually refer to it as a failure to remind yourself to do something because we're brought up to try to use our memory to interrupt ourselves it's called prospective memory that's the, the, the psychologist psychological name for it but we tend to think of interruptions of this nature to come from the mind which is why we use the word remind ourselves but more broadly speaking it's really a failure to make an interruption happen at the right moment a failure of prospective memory so let's say that that's that's what we're trying to overcome this tendency within the, ourselves to not remind ourselves which is a part of not interrupting ourselves so the way we say it to people is that we we forgot so we talk about forgetting we talk about the use of memory and um, we're in the middle of something and it was important and we somehow skipped over the fact that this interruption was important and unfortunately you know most of us would like to effectively interrupt ourselves but as we look at our ecosystem the tools that we have to work with whether they're uh, on our, uh, a pc a laptop or they're on a phone or some people have watches the combination of that or a tablet the combination of all of them has created a bit of a mess even on a, on a closed ecosystem like apples for example the way they work together is haphazard it doesn't jibe some notifications work all the time some don't work they work some of the time they're not in sync there are a number of things they don't do but they don't produce the result we want which is to get the exact and precise interruptions that we need to either interrupt the micro flow state or interrupt some longer project that we're working on and if you're someone who has struggled to get your notifications to work you may know what i'm talking about or if you're someone who's just turned them all off you probably know what i'm talking about and if you're someone who's gotten them to work you know kudos kudos to you um unfortunately i've noticed that whenever windows does an update or android does an update all of my careful settings go to heck and the apps that I was relying on stop working. So the net effect is the same. A failure to interrupt myself effectively or a failure to build an ecosystem that does it for me. Um, most of us can't afford to have an administrative assistant or a, a, a remote admin uh, uh, someone who is working for us a remote assistant um, to do this kind of thing for us we don't have a, a secretary we don't have if you've watched the west wing we don't have a mrs landingham to tap on our shoulder if we're the president of the united states and says sir your next meeting is supposed to start in five minutes or you need to leave for the summit in half an hour or you need to you told me to remind you when it's time to go and have dinner in the residence that Mrs. Landingham was the interrupter. And you know, in the movie, she plays the role of a perfect person in terms of her ability to do this. Now, when we're on the receiving end of this, it, it's, it's, it's at least annoying, irritating. It's sometimes a, set of, a, a feeling of upset when we're in the moment and realize that we missed something that was important and we needed to be interrupted in order to accomplish 
there could even be a sense of panic because now we have to scramble to do something, make something work, make something fit. And in that moment, we realize that we missed the interruption or the interruption failed. We are out of the flow state. Once we get out of the flow state, studies show it takes us 25 minutes to get back in. Or if we try to stay in the flow state because we have to get the job done, we get the job done very badly because it's not very good quality flow state. It's probably not flowing at all at that point. Other people around us, when they see that we get engrossed like this, they think that we are absent minded, you know, like Mr. Magoo or some kind of professor who gets lost and can't, you know, do basic things. The rest of the world is able to process these interruptions and to work effectively, but we get lost and we're not effective and people notice and they make jokes about us and they say that we, we can't trust us to have their head we have our heads in the clouds or we're artists, what do you expect? He's been in front of the easel for the last forty eight hours. And people sometimes just make accommodations for us, but it's not the good kind of accommodation. It's the kind where they shake their heads, kind of roll their eyes and say he is he or she is just not not you know he's this kind of person and he's that kind of person but you know deep down we really want to be high achievers which is why we care why, why you're listening to this podcast you want to accomplish sound and good things in all parts of your life you don't want to leave any of them out right you want to be good at your art or your programming or your writing or whatever you use the flow state for and you want to be good at managing interruption you want to be good at meeting the needs of your family you want to be good at remembering to pick up your kids you don't want to be someone who is flaky you want to be reliable not just because you want to be seen as reliable because you want to be reliable in and of yourself it's an intrinsic want an intrinsic goal that you have for you you want to be someone who takes care of business and you want to be someone who does your best work. So you're thinking there's got to be a way, there ought to be a way, there should be a way to do both, to be effective in doing awesome work and at the same time taking care of the practical needs of life. Because the truth is, if you don't become good at this, if you don't find a way to solve this problem, the practical side of life will eventually erode the quality of life of even your ability to get into the flow state because you know you can't go to the, stay in the flow state for so long if you don't eat the body requires certain drink water your body requires certain basics and if you try to persist in the flow state without eating and drinking for example resting at some point It'll only destroy the quality of the flow state. So there's only so far you can go without there being some negative feedback. Also, something, you know, you got to pay the rent, right? If you're someone who's a creative and you need to bill, you need to invoice, or you need to ship, you know, do the boring side of the work. You don't do the boring side of the business very well. You won't have a business. You won't earn the right to go into the flow state and do your best work and be as creative as you want to be. You won't be like the, the or, or protagonist who, you know, he, he Ivan was a, a, a graphics designer and he wanted to do, keep doing his best work. Well, you gotta create an environment, a business that allows you to do that. And if you don't care, take care of these seemingly mundane, non-creative activities, if you don't find a way to interrupt yourself to get them done on a micro and macro level, you won't have a business. And you lose the lose the ability to go into the flow state, go take a job flicking flipping burgers, right? When we realize we have the problem, or we try to do is you know, try harder to remember. I'm not sure how we do that, but we we try, you know, we determination. We may ask someone who's not reliable, you know, ask a spouse or our kids or a friend, do me a favor, remind me when so and so and so and so. And they might not be might be the right person, might not be a Mrs. Landingham, and they make a mistake. And they do their life and they're like, Oh, you want me to remind you? Oh, I didn't know. Oh, oh I can't barely remember to brush my own teeth, let alone remind you. <laughs> it's not, not a good not a good solution. Uh, but some of us 
just as I mentioned before, we turn off all our notifications um, or you try and turn all of them on and then you have overload. Neither situation is ideal. Um, or we go to pocket and we pay for someone who is reliable, which is inexpensive. I read a McKinsey report that said that most companies have cut back on their admin support for executives to cut the cost, even though studies show that they help executives to be more productive. In other words, they're not really looking at cost benefit, the cost benefit trade-off. They're really just trying to cut the cost. So the reason this problem kind of exists and keeps going and, and eventually infects us as human beings is that we, we suffer from something called the Zagarnik effect. And that's what happens when you, for example, make a promise to interrupt yourself at two o'clock to have lunch. One or two things happens. One is that you either forget or your mind devotes 5%, 10% of your capacity to reminding you at two o'clock. So there are a bunch of studies that show that when you do that, your, your attention drifts to the clock the closer you get to the time. So you're losing some of the flow state. Also, the, the, the Zagarnik effect, which is this pinging of your mind by your subconscious to remind you, two o'clock, don't forget, lunch, make sure, make sure, that eventually leads to a feeling of overwhelm because your mind, your subconscious mind doesn't trust your conscious mind. It believes that you need to be pinged or reminded. So the Zagarnik effect can take you over. So by the time you get to five minutes or two, the flow state is, is lost. All you're doing is watching the clock. And all you're doing is ticking, watching the hands tick down. So why does this problem, you know, if we know that it exists, why is it so such a hard one for us to overcome? Well, there's, of course, the cost of hiring someone reliable. That I mentioned that. There is a lack of proper software and tools uh, that I mentioned before. Uh, there's the willpower that we think we need to overcome the problem. But the truth is that willpower isn't what's needed. It's skill. More willpower, according to um, Roy Boymeister, which is what we like to rely on, doesn't get us to where we want to get. Willpower is a depletable uh, asset. And we think it'll get it to us. All I need to do is to be more determined. And you know, when you're telling your friends, you just need to make up your mind to do it. We say things that imply that your problem is lack of willpower. Well, his research said it's not true. Perhaps more pertinent, and what we'll be looking at is that we just don't understand the problem. It's not a matter of willpower, commitment. It is a matter of the tools, but the tools don't exist. But the truth is, the lack of proper tools comes from a, a shallow understanding of what we really need when we ask ourselves to remind ourselves. We don't know what's really going on. Which is why we use the word remind and remember so often instead of the word interrupt. So I say this might be important to you if doing your best work on a regular basis, having time in the week, setting time in the week to do your best work is an important part of your week. Arguably, it's the most important part of your week. It's probably the reason you are hired by someone or you're, you get hired by people is to do your best work. And if your best work comes from these moments, then these moments are the ones that are, you might say, the absolute most important times of the week. They're the ones that are the, 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 the hardest to access, but they're the most precious. They're the most leveraged. They're the, the ones that, if you're thinking Pareto effect, they're the 20% of the time that produces 80% of the quality and the volume and the work that you do. So it makes sense to, for us to focus on what it is that's happening so that we can understand what 
kind of solutions are needed. Because if we could if we could actually get to some solutions in this conversation, this discussion, maybe your best work could even become even better. Maybe you're leaving money on the table. Maybe your inability to self-interrupt is actually costing you some output volume-wise, quality-wise. Maybe you're having to go back and fix problems and spend extra time doing that you wouldn't ordinarily have to do. Maybe there's a way to, to, if you're doing work for other people, for your customers, internal, external, that you could increase their satisfaction if you're able to solve this problem of increasing the quality of your work by managing your interruptions. Okay. So I'm going to assume that you're, you've listened this far. Um, you're someone who wants solutions. You're not just listening for the, for the heck of it. And um, you're someone who is willing to make some changes in order to produce that result. So let's move forward with that assumption. So I've tried a number of tactics to, to self-interrupt myself. And I've become a lot better than I used to be. But there was a time when I was writing my book, for example, when I would resort to starting, starting my time in front of my keyboard. I would start writing at 3.30 in the morning. So I'd go to bed early and simply wake up early. And as, we, as I woke up a bit long before anybody else, there were a few interruptions by definition because everyone was sleeping, right? So it's not a, a real solution in the sense that it happened in the middle of a day, but it's a tactic that I use in order to get by. And I've, I keep tinkering with different ways to remind myself, and I'm going to share some of them with you. Um, some of them come from my book, Perfect Time-Based Productivity, where there's, a, there's an entire skill called interrupting. So first part of our talk today had to do with defining the problem. Let's now move into solutions. And I defined interrupting as the, the basically what we've been calling self-interrupting, the skill of creating the right kinds of interruptions for yourself so that you can interrupt yourself, stop yourself, come out of the flow state in the, at the micro level or come out of the project at the macro level in order to come up a level and ask yourself, okay, standing outside the flow state, what do I do next? So let's call it a skill. And I broke that skill down in my book into three areas, three sub skills. And if you followed my work in here at all, you have read the book or have done any of my programs, uh, new habits, or a rapid assessment program, you probably know that I've broken it down into three sub skills. And the first one is to outsource the task of stopping yourself to an external mechanism. So an external mechanism is one that requires no management by you. In other words, none of your brain power. In other words, keeps you free of the Zagarnik effect because your, your mind is not involved at all. And I've mentioned a few other people uh, device, uh, software, an app, um, plain old, I guess a plain old alarm clock would be a device. <laughs> That's a form of interrupting your sleep, self-interruption. Um, and there's probably others. I just haven't maybe thought of all of them yet. Um, but the idea is to make it, make the interruption independent of your attention. When you do so, you leave yourself free to tap into your entire capability, creative attention, cre uh, attention, creative ability, 100%. And as you do so over and over again, you become more and more capable, more and more uh, able to tap into more. You're able to grow as a creative person. That's the first. The second skill has to do with setting up auto reminders so that when you're in the middle of flowing so before you enter the flow state you say okay i'm not going to enter it and to go for the next 12 hours until i can't even think anymore and i have to crawl into bed and rest for another 12. no you actually have a plan and you say okay i'm going to spend the next five hours 
after the first hour i'm going to get up and walk for about five ten minutes outside in nature i'm going to come back in and, and continue or i'm going to set pomodoros for example which allow me to take a five minute break every half an hour approximately and then at the end of four pom pomodoros i take a half an hour break whatever the formula is that you prefer But you have a plan that's set up for you to manage your time while you're in the flow state. You get you get different resources that are ready to you. Um, you get food. You get drink. You figure out where the bathroom is. So you don't have to go searching if you're in a familiar location. You tell people around you, um, you, you, you that you're going to be in the flow state. Please don't interrupt. You drink your coffee if you need that kind of oomph or that kind of support you make sure that your calendar is set up you block the time in your calendar and that nothing else needs to be done during that time and combination of all these activities allows you to enter into the flow state completely and it includes the interrupting activities that I some of those are I mentioned are interrupting for interruptions for self interruptions okay and then the third skill is what do you do when you're you run over so you get to the end of uh you you all of a sudden realize that oh my goodness I'm over the flow I'm over the time I'm, I've, I've not five and a half hours so how do you relate to that? And in the book, I talk about relating to that as a defect, an error or a mistake. And you know, defects are there to be eliminated. So at a future time, you th think about it. Why did I go over? What didn't work? And if once, you, as you become very, very skilled, you would never go over, not unconsciously. You could consciously go over, but you wouldn't run over unconsciously. You would know what you were doing. Okay. So the interruptions would allow you to completely enter into the flow state, completely enter into that time of intense work when you're doing that project. The rest of your life is being taken care of so that you can be in the flow state. You wouldn't get interrupted by other kinds of disruptions that happen sort of by accident. But the disruptions, if you're skillful, would be ones that tell you exactly what to do. So for example, you might set an alarm on your device, phone, computer, app, watch, whatever, to take that break to go walking, to get up and um, use the, use the use the uh, drink, drink some water, use the bathroom so that you can come back fresh. So that it's not just one unconscious flow state that you're very conscious of what, what you're doing and what you're entering into, what you're going to do next. So it's a bit of a, a mental and physical break. Um, I'm actually going through the list of, of, of skills that you need to be in the flow state so that you can get in it effectively and stay in it for as long as you want um and the by the way the flow flow is also a skill that's outlined in my book in perfect time-based productivity it has a host of skills it's, a, it's about looks like about 13 14 different sub skills that relate to just flowing which is the skill that's mentioned in my book but anyway back to back to interrupting so when you understand how the flow state works, it's not a leap to then start to develop your skill at interrupting if it has to do with the flow state. But how about everyday reminders, like to remind yourself to pay a bill or remind yourself to get on a phone call or remind yourself to start exercising or remind yourself to take a break. So I mentioned those four because those are very different kinds of interruptions. Unfortunately, I've not found software that does what I'm about to describe, but I wish it did, which is to offer you an escalating kind of interruptions, 
an escalation where you have everywhere from a mild interruption to a strong interruption. So what do I mean by mild to strong? So a strong interruption, for example, would occur when you're waking up in the morning. You're dead asleep. You've created this self-interruption and it needs to be strong enough to pull you out of the deepest sleep. So if you're a heavy sleeper, some people will put two alarms, one mechanical, one electronic, just in case. <laughs> But the point is that the combination of the two will pull you out of, the, of, of your sleep. It's a strong, strong interruptor. If you're going to have a meeting at, let's say, 4 o'clock, later in the day, you have a bunch of other stuff that you're doing, you're focused on doing these things, and you're not relying, hopefully, on memory at all to tell you that you have this 4 o'clock meeting. So what could come in here is uh, first a mild alarm and then when four o'clock comes a strong alarm so that if for example and this happens to me on weekends in particular it happened to me just this past weekend i had a seven o'clock 7 p.m appointment on sunday the only appointment for the whole day now sundays for me starts off by riding my bicycle in the morning taking a very long nap and then doing some work that i find to be fun it's not sitting in front of the computer managing a whole bunch of different tasks. And the problem is that I don't consult my calendar in the way that I do when I'm on a, uh, in a, on a regular day. So my system isn't flawless. So I have to consult the calendar a few times because I am using some memory, even though I do use the interrupters, but they don't behave the way I do. I want them to all the time. I don't know why. And the apps that I've tried sometimes work and sometimes don't. So it's very haphazard, unfortunately. But what I would want that reminder to do for me is give me a mild one first and then a strong one just before the meeting starts at four. So that if I'm away from my phone the way I was on Sunday, I wouldn't have to rely on my phone being with me in that moment in order to make sure I don't miss the meeting. What it should do is start making a strong alarm like it's gonna wake me up from deep sleep. So wherever I am in the house, I can hear the alarm and say, what's that? And say, oh, I forgot had this meeting at seven o'clock. So I've gotten around that to some degree by creating wake up, using the alarm clock to remind me of weekend events. It's not a great solution. It's not integrated with my calendar. It's not integrated with my task management software. It's really this additional kind of alarm. But you can see what I'm trying to do to make sure that wherever I am in the house that I get the alarm and that my phone will be somewhere in the house and even if it's in a different room, I can still hear it. Some people have accomplished the same thing using a watch, a smart watch. If I can't speak to the efficacy of them, but I did hear from one of my colleagues that just the other day he, he, he had his smartwatch set and then the battery ran down and that was that. So a smart, a smart system, an ecosystem would realize that your primary way of being interrupted is no longer, isn't working. You haven't acknowledged the reminder. And then it would escalate once again to stronger and stronger reminders, stronger and stronger interrupters. So that in the end, this alarm would go off that you just couldn't couldn't uh, avoid i've also used a countdown timer so a countdown timer is really effective for entering the flow state i've used the one that has a it has oh, it's, it's a little bit difficult to explain especially if you're not seeing me but it has a it starts off as a full pie chart at the top of an hour and as the hour is consumed the pie chart gets smaller and smaller until there's only a slice left and then it the alarm goes off at the end of the hour so it starts off full red and then in the shape of a pie gets smaller and smaller smaller and smaller pie chart so you can watch it you know the one i have is on a on a phone that i have and i have it sometimes in front of me and you can watch your progress in a way just by glancing at you can tell how much of the hour you have left to accomplish this item in the flow state. I found that really, really effective. 
uh, it, it's narrow the purpose is narrow it's a little bit like a using an egg timer in a way except it doesn't have any noise and the egg timer is the numbers on an egg timer are typically too fine they're too small you'd have to actually stop what you're doing to read the numbers see where you are this gives you a visual at a glance a, a good idea and there's some software that actually I'll put the, the link to the software in the show notes but there's some software you can download for free that helps you that does exactly what I'm describing okay. uh, and then there are apps so unfortunately the apps as I said are haphazard and I've not found one that's consistent and here's the problem why I think the designers of reminder reminders tend to be a part or tend to be a part of the team that puts task management and calendar software together so they're they're working on just one feature inside of a larger app or larger piece of software in other words they're not experts in interrupting so i've tried to find experts who develop software in apps in interrupting self-interrupting and I've not really been able to find them. There are, and I, I say they're not experts because they haven't studied the needs that I'm talking about in this podcast. They've not gone to that level of depth. So they don't really understand what someone who cares that much about product, their productivity requires to do their best work, either micro or macro. So I stay waiting and I'm hoping that, you know, as a result of doing this podcast, if you know someone who's a developer who's looking for a good idea, this is one because the perfect interrupter would replace the Mrs. Landingham. They would replace your memory. They would be flawless. They would exist, coexist on multiple platforms at the very same time. They would behave in concert. They would have some of these escalating features that I talked about. Um, they would work like a partner for you and they'd help you to do be effective and do your best work and avoid that frustration that i talked about at the top of the show to do that they would under, need to understand the flow state and they would need to understand where this is coming from so there are some distinctions and principles they would need to bring but until that software comes we need the one need to be the ones because i'm here to say this may not be a problem for a 12 year old who has one or two time demands and keeps them in her memory, his memory, because the number of time demands that they're trying to manage on a daily basis is really small. But as you make progress from being a 12 year old with two time demands per day to being an adult with hundreds of time demands, time demand is a task, by the way, it's a kind of task. Then as you get to that level, this problem will must become a problem must become an issue and you must find a way to progressively resolve it the bad news i have today is that it's not like you flick a switch and you solve it it's more like you're gaining different levels of mastery my experience is that you're able to go back and forth you make two steps forward and then three steps back it has this kind of very uneven quality where it's difficult to make progress. But I'm here to say that if you're committed to manage lots of tasks, then your time is going to be your your discretionary time is going to be short. The time the, the opportunity for error is going to be shrinking. It's going to be getting smaller and smaller. You need to be effective in every moment of the day, and to do so, you're going to need to be great at self-interrupting. So I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments, just check out the show notes below um, and any feedback you have on this episode and keep listening. I'm going to, I want to tell you about some, uh, some of the things that are coming up here at um, the, the task management and time blocking podcast. And in particular, our next episode coming up in just a few seconds.
Before we go on, let me tell you about another one of our, our sponsors, Predict. So Predict is a software that allows you to schedule your days to maximize flow and performance, not attendance. Because there's no point in working when your brain and your body are just not ready. Having two or three hours of profoundly focused work produces 30% better results than 10 hours of unfocused effort. And Predict is help here to help you find those 90 minute blocks in your day based on what your body and your routines tell you to do. That's Predict, P-R-D-I-K-T dot C-O. Here's a clip from our next episode. Where a time allocation strategy will be more effective because if it's a complex task or a task we've never done before, novel or complex tasks, then we can't accurately estimate them. And instead we should need to be allocating time to moving that forward. But then we also dived into, or we started diving into, which we'll get into this episode, is how do you allocate your time both at the macro level all the way down to the micro level. And we'll talk about the three levels of time allocation and how to make those work. And if you want to leave a comment about this episode or any aspect of the work that we're doing here at the Task Management and Time Blocking Podcast, you can go over to www.replytofrancis.info and send me either a message uh, by text or send me a voice message, a voice note. And as you probably know, we have a couple of places that you can interact with other people, talk about this episode. One is at the community, mightytaskers.scheduleu.org, and you'll see the link in the show notes. And the other, of course, is our upcoming Task Management and Time Blocking Summit coming up in March. Two outstanding opportunities to interact with other people about the ideas that you've heard on this podcast or any of our episodes that are coming up. And if you'd like to support the work we're doing, I invite you to click on the Patreon link below to make a donation. And please don't forget to like our show and recommend it to others on iTunes, Stitcher, Google, or whatever past podcast app or service you're using. This is Francis Wade. I'm signing out. I hope to see you on a future episode. And until then, take care and all the best. See you later.